Hello, I'm Bob Weeks for Wichita Liberty TV, your weekly source for news, analysis, and commentary about Kansas and Wichita government and public affairs. Broadcast on Great Plains Television, that's channel 26.1, Sunday morning at 8.30 and again repeated at 4.30, but now we've got some other times on Sunday and also on Saturday as well. Check my website, The Voice for Liberty, that's at wichitaliberty.org. You can find those additional times there. You'll also find show notes for today's episode, all the old episodes of Wichita Liberty TV, and all the other content that I and others produce on almost a daily basis. Well, today with us in the studio, we've got Denidri Herbert. She is an experienced journalist, most recently as editor and reporter for the Gardner News and a columnist for the Kansas City Star. A year ago and a month ago about, she became the editor of The Sentinel, which we've talked about numerous times on this show, uh, a new publication that covers Kansas and a little bit of western Missouri, the Kansas City area. She's a graduate of Kansas State University and lives with her husband in Johnson County. Some of you remember her as Gidget Southway, the anonymous, well no longer anonymous, right. blogger, and um, wrote the Inside Kansas GOP blog, and still works on that a little bit, but I think The Sentinel keeps you pretty Pretty busy, Denidri, and welcome to Wichita Liberty TV. Thank you for having me, Bob. Carl's taken this week off as from his co-host duties, but Denidri, it's been uh, just about a year and a little more since the launch of the Sentinel. You are the editor of the Sentinel. How um, how do you feel about the first year of its operations? Oh, well, I think the most important thing to me is that I think we're making small difference. We still have a long way to go. Um, I'd love to get some people down here covering more of what happens in Wichita. I try to mm -hmm. hit it occasionally, but. I'm only here mm -hmm. once every couple months, so I don't have my, my feet to the fire here, but we're getting hits from all over the world. We're getting more readership, and I think as the website is growing, we're, we're starting to make a little dent in, um, into the mainstream media, getting some of the stories that may not get published there, not necessarily our stories picked up, but the them picking up the stories we're doing and writing them on their own, which is wonderful. Yeah, and I know the Sentinel does have a mix of uh, news and editorial, pretty clearly separated, yeah, right? I, I think so. And Jack Cashill, who's uh, a writer with long experience, does yes. a lot of the editorials, not all he of does. them though. But uh, yeah, it's really, I think, a great resource. And I am uh, I feature a lot of their articles in my newsletter. I push out weekly or so like that. So I think it's done a, a very good job. And congratulations. Well, thank uh, you. It's been uh, a fun for year. For that, yeah. And um, so one of the big news things, and I think you wrote an editorial about this, is this weekend here in Wichita, we're having the annual convention of the Kansas Republican Party. This year it's a pretty big deal because it's an election year. We've got a governor's seat that's, well, not really open. Jeff Collier just ascended to that, but, you know, it's fairly open. But we've got other races like the Secretary of State where there's a number of candidates. Other statewide offices uh, are up, up available to all the all the members of the House of Representatives. But anyway, there is going to be a debate there. Um, I can't wait. Yeah, Andy Hoosier and I are going to be providing some before and after commentary. Uh, but not all the candidates are going to be at this debate. What's going on with that, Denidri? So months ago, this is my understanding, I talked to the executive, well, the chair of the Kansas Republican Party, Kelly, Kelly Arnold. Arnold. Mm -hmm. um, and they months ago, the candidates, when they were first getting in, were getting asked to participate in all kinds of debates and forums. And it sounds like they wanted some sort of set of agreement and rules just so they weren't going to debates every five minutes. Mm -hmm. There's only so much time in the day and they got to cover the whole state. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, Kelly says they worked with everybody who was running, including some of the people who didn't sign. Um, they didn't open it to the high school students running, but they worked with all the Republicans who were eligible to participate. Um, and tried to come up with an agreement. Kelly says some of the stuff they agreed to got left out, some of the stuff they kind of did a little bit of negotiating, and they came to a set of rules. The rules um, are available on the Sentinel website, but mm -hmm. they're, um, they're pretty basic. It's, mm -hmm. This is not them trying to keep the candidates away from people, and the, the controversy this week was that, well, it was last week, the Kansas Press Association had their conference, invited all the gubernatorial candidates, and none of the Republicans went. But if you read the rules, their rules drafted months ago said the first debate for the Republicans will be this, this weekend. So yeah. it wasn't a, we don't want to be in front of you. It was a more of a timing thing. But I, the, I'm not sure if any of the candidates even told them that, but had the news people bothered to find out what the rules were, it was pretty obvious that the problem with this forum wasn't who was hosting it, where it was just timing. They had signed an agreement saying, we won't debate until this day. 
So Jim Barnett, if I understand, did attend that, and he's not attending the uh, events this weekend. He'll be in that chair on Wichita oh, Liberty TV in a couple weeks, I think it is. So we can ask him more about that then. But I, I think heard he was offered the opportunity and just yeah. Well, I mean, he's certainly a major serious candidate, yeah, having been a senator for, sure. for a number of years and so forth. Uh, one of the rule was is uh, no questions will be asked that cannot be asked of all questions and. I think you pointed out that the Garden City uh, Telegram newspaper said, well, that's uh, uh, Kobach would not be singled out with questions about harmful voting restrictions he sought, for example, and now Governor Jeff Collier would not be asked why he favored the many failed policies of his predecessor, Sam Brownback. So there's some loaded language in there that may not be entirely uh, truthful, but uh, they, they do have a little bit of point there that they're not going to be able to pin down candidates with potentially difficult or embarrassing things that's, to explain. That's true, but the the other side of that, if you are Wink Hartman or you are Mark Hutton and the debate, the, the moderator spends 25 minutes asking Chris Kobach about whatever, trying mm -hmm. to pin Chris Kobach down, they don't get any time. They don't yeah. get any time in front of the voters. They don't get any time to put their positions on paper. So it's it's a... I think that's fairly standard um, when it's a when it's a primary anyway that they candidates try to attend forums where they can talk about the issues and not focus on personalities or personal things quite as much. And that is important that this is a party function, not a Kansas state right. law. And I noticed that the Garden City paper talked about uh, Jim Barnett, didn't, because he's not going to be in this debate, he did not, he rejected the partisan pressure. Now, I thought partisanship had to do with <laughs> being Republican or Democrat, not inter, but that brings up a point, you know, that there are kind of two Republican parties, but... Well, and this is a closed <laughs> primary. Like, th mm -hmm. this primary election, the only people who you might not even be able to, I don't know if you're registered, you have to be a registered a Republican, Republican in order to vote in the election. So it just... Right. <laughs> So it is targeted at Republicans, although yeah. um, come August, or I'm sorry, come November, uh, all Kansans will be able to vote for either one of these or someone else. Could be several someone Well, else's. and when that comes up, the, the candidates probably will establish guidelines for each debate, just like they do in the presidential debate. The Hillary Clinton campaign and the, and the Donald Trump campaign didn't just go, okay, throw open the doors, do whatever. They had rules and they had negotiations, and that's how it works. And we're running a, a bit over okay. time oh, here, I but uh, I think um, uh, people have talked about the, Repo I think the Garden City Telegram, they talked about this being a rigged process, and we've seen that the Democratic presidential debate two years ago seemed to be actually rigged in favor of one candidate. I don't know how the Garden City Telegram <laughs> writers or editorialists... Unsigned. Unsigned. I have a feeling I could guess who wrote it, but I, I, just, I just don't understand why they take such a limited view of what's occurring and throw that out to their readers. Yeah. Well, certainly uh, uh, KGBT is broadcasting the debate uh, live on TV and also radio. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens in just, uh, uh, well, tomorrow, I guess it's happening there. So, well, Denise, we were way over time for this first segment. So let's take our first commercial break. We'll be back with another segment of Wichita Liberty TV. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks. Carl Peter John's taking the week off, but we've got the Sentinels' Denidri Herbert here with us. And uh, Denidri, on Facebook, you mentioned this week that you are having some difficulties with the Kansas Legislature website. So, uh, could you elaborate? Sure, sure. Every every day, um, for viewers who maybe don't follow the, K the Kansas Legislature that carefully, you can via the website, which is kslegislature.org, I That's believe. Right, yeah. Anyway. They, so you can listen to some of the, the committees, you can find testimony, you can, I, I use it quite a bit. Seriously, every day almost, I have to call the hotline and say, I don't know if your website's down or if it's me. 
once I had to clear my cat, the IT, they direct you to different people. They'll mm -hmm. say, oh, you need to call IT, and IT will ask, are you on the state computer? <laughs> Which, mm -hmm. I, no, I'm on my own at home. And uh, you just have to clear. It's kind of shocking how big that website is and how capable it should be of getting information out to people and how impossible it is. I'm sure you use it quite a bit. Yes, and you're right. It is, uh, you know, it is fairly new. I think it's about five or six years old. And for the, at the beginning, there were some grave difficulties. It got a little bit better, but still. I feel like it, it's backsliding. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just me. It may be. For example, there's a page for every committee, which is good. Yes. One of the links there is uh, like, it's, it has something to do like with agenda and testimony or something like that. Well, first of all, not many committees are posting testimony. A couple of years ago, I w looked and did an analysis of every committee, found that only about one third or so were actually posting the testimony. Now, posting a testimony is easy because if you've testified, you, you have know to that email it to them <laughs> yes, and print you, fifty copies. You have to supply it in 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 uh, electronic form, and it would be so easy just to flip that up there. And uh, it would be available for not only the conferees, because if you, as you know, Denidri, sometimes these committee hearings are packed full a room of a hundred or whatever people. Yes. Do the, does everybody get a copy of the testimony, the printed testimony? No, but if it was available in advance on the website, every, it's on your iPhone or your iPad or whatever. Well, and I'll tell you how old, uh, well, how long it's taking them. I called yesterday or the day before about some testimony that happened. So I was there Wednesday. I called Thursday to see if the written testimony had been uploaded because I wasn't, it was packed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was not able to get a copy of any of the testimony. And she, I got bounced around as you do if you call the hotline. Anyway, I ended up to the person who's responsible of uploading it. And so that was February 14th, I believe, was when I went to the hearing. She said, oh, yeah, I won't have that stuff uploaded until March 5th or so, maybe March 15th. And I'm sure they're very busy. I'm sure they have a lot on their plates. And I'm sure, I know she emailed me some of the testimony that she could find, but she did have it in electronic form. They're sticking it into a Dropbox. It is very surprising to me that it's not almost a... Uh, oh, here's the testimony, I'm just going to move it into the Dropbox, and mm -hmm. then it's there. So some committees I know have been using Dropbox. That's a commercial uh, solution that many people use for free. I yeah. think the legislature would probably have to have a commercial account that might cost them uh, $100 a year or something right. like that. They could, you know, and Kansas Legislative Research is another organization that produces a great amount of material, of but stuff. very rarely is it ever posted on their website. And, you know, Governor Collier, in his speech, was it last week, called for some greater transparency efforts. Sometimes I feel the need to be that they try to do too much. Like, at the minimum, they could just have one Dropbox or one Google Drive is probably what I would use if I were in charge. Just one, and every document gets posted there. Now, with just only one, there'd be a big, huge mishmash, but guess what? With Google, you can search you can through find it all. It. Exactly. No, I agree with you 100%, and that's one thing in all this transparency talk, which is kind of the buzzword this year, if you haven't noticed, um, that would be fairly simple for them to do is just make the website a little, I, I don't think it would be free, but m clean up the website, make mm -hmm. everything easier to find, more easily accessible for people who don't spend all day, every day on it. If you're just a lay person going to that website and looking for something, good luck. And there is a hotline where you can call, but if you call the hotline, chances are they are going to first send you elsewhere. Like they, they, they can't, which is good, but they may not send you to the right place. You'll get bounced around two or three times before you find the person you need to talk to to get the information you need. Mm -hmm. That hotline is almost, I don't want to say unnecessary, but some of that stuff could be done online if the Absolutely. website was more if polished, was, modern. Yeah, able to handle those things uh, yeah. uh, through the website rather than involving uh, uh, people. You know, and I mentioned about overreaching sometimes, and really I think the most stark example of this is, is the video of the proceedings of both the House and the Senate. Now, we've had audio for years. In some of the committee rooms, and in some, well, well, and on the... Of okay. the two chambers. Yes. yes, we've had audio for quite a long time. Usually it works, doesn't always work there sometimes, especially if it's a, you know, a contentious uh, debate or something, it's going to be overloaded. But 
they don't keep those recordings, Denidri. Last year, I asked the uh, Secretary of the Senate, that's the chief clerical person, and the clerk of the House, could you send me, please, the audio recording of yesterday's proceedings? And the answer in both cases was, we do not retain those. So for perhaps about another $100 a year, they could be posted to a podcast site. I even think less than that, Bob. Uh, the Gardner City Council, uh, they record their meetings on mm -hmm. a security camera you can buy at Sam's Club for 200 bucks, mm -hmm. And they upload it to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And YouTube, they have a channel, which I believe having a YouTube channel is free. Absolutely. They, I mean, I don't know how much they m may at some point have to pay because they're using so much uh, space. Oh, nothing. But no. probably virtually nothing. And I don't think it would be hard. Yeah, YouTube likes the audio because, or the content because they're going to sell advertising along exactly. with that. So they can target it right at people at yes, Gardner. Yes, there are plenty of people who love content no matter what it is. Yeah. So there's also the idea live streaming is all you hear. Well, the Senate and the House generally meet during the daytime right. when a lot of people aren't available. So if it was on YouTube, then it would be available. The video would be available at any time to watch. You could zoom through the nonsense at the beginning and it's just they just I think it's an attitude problem Denidri don't you they well, just don't want to do having it. that video I can see plenty of times when some of it might end up in campaign ads mm -hmm. the this person said something stupid and now we have it captured forever mm -hmm. instead of just on a mailer with a little with the words it's actual video of somebody saying something they probably wish they wouldn't have. Yeah, so. so maybe that's an incentive for politicians not to say stupid things. I don't know. but And then what's the problem <laughs> with that? <laughs> well, you know, I mentioned attitude because here in Wichita, like our city council meetings, the videos uh, broadcast live, but also recorded and available at least for a very long time. And there's been a city council member down here that says, you know, told me, we don't like this. The people up in Topeka, they aren't recorded forever, but we are. That's, you know, they don't like that. So, well, Denidri, that's very interesting. Let's take another commercial break for Wichita Liberty TV. We'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back to Wichita Liberty TV. I'm Bob Weeks and our guest this week, Denidri Herbert of the Sentinel, KSMO that is, to signify that they do cover Kansas plus parts of Missouri as well. Um, one of the things the governor mentioned in his speech last week, uh, talking about greater transparency, some things were fairly minor, like not charging for records requests of so the first hundred pages. Uh, requiring administration to use official email accounts for all business. Here's something that could be substantial. Third, he says, I will implement performance metrics for cabinet agencies so Kansans can see how we perform. Now that's something that there's been talk about this for a, a long time and a lot of it's resisted, it's supported, but performance metrics are oftentimes very complex. They take a lot of data to calculate and report upon data that I fear may not be always captured and, and uh, at, the, at the appropriate time. Um, do you have any ideas about that? How will that go over, do you think? Well, it completely depends on what the metrics are. Mm -hmm. if the, well, f for instance, and this was uh, Brownback's proposal during the State of the Union, he talked about um, uh, getting accountabilities in the schools by requiring graduation rates to be 95 percent, mm -hmm. you know, having a goal of 95 percent. I mean, that's a great goal, but it, as, a, as a measuring stick, it's not necessarily a very good one because I, I can start throwing diplomas at every 17-year-old yeah. in the state and say we're at 95 percent, but if they don't know anything, I'm not sure yeah, so how valuable that is. Yeah, so the standards of graduation, which are set by the schools, they could be altered to uh, improve the or results. Simply so. just, yes, yes. And so it depends on what the metrics are. I don't think until we know what some of those metrics are that it's, I, I don't think we can say for sure. I mean, obviously I love the idea. And I know Dr. Collier, it appears, has a has a pretty big plan to, to institute performance-based budgeting, which they've been talking about for a while, but mm -hmm. he's hired, he's moved the budget director over into this position, and right. my understanding is he's going to be overseeing that. So that metric, but so even that's there. that's Sean Sullivan, who's been here before. Yes. And, 
And I think that, that performance-based budgeting has been successful in some states. But it depends on how it's done. I don't know if you've done any looking into it, but uh, the, I'm, I'm speaking from memory here, but uh, the, the House tried to institute this with the Department of Ag, I believe it's the Department of Ag, is kind of a... The first one. The first mm -hmm. one, and it did not go well, kind of, my understanding is the way that they were given the information was this is how much we spent, and so that's what we need, kind of, like they didn't... That's the traditional way of government budget. Right, they turned, they submitted it, uh, uh, some information and kind of a report, but they didn't actually say this is what we do and this is how much this is how we measured what it would cost to do it. They said, this is what we do, and this is how much we spent to do it, as opposed to this is what we, you know, this is mm -hmm. what it costs. Like, how much does it cost to uh, get a kidney transplant? Yeah. $100,000 is what you pay for the surgeon. This is what you pay for the medicine. This is what you pay for this. Does the Department of Agriculture do kidney transplants? No, okay, I, I, I don't know what they do, doing. so I'm just coming up with a okay. metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor. They do not, I, get, I hope, not I get do kidney transplants. What, what you mean there. Well, you know, sometimes I think these performance metrics, the way they might be used, for example, there's always been, there's been a push by many to have increased reporting and accountability for schools. And it's thought that it's, the story is always schools that perform well will be given more money. Now, they, the education establishment says school performance is all about money. So right. if a school's doing poorly, that sounds like that's a school that needs more money, according to what, what they believe. Right. A school that's doing well might give some of it away to the poor performing schools, but no, they, the best performing schools are gonna get even more money. That seems to go backwards with what they profess publicly. Although I have to say, I mean, you and I both know, because I think we're free market people, that giving people an incentive to do well usually induces them to do well. Mm -hmm. And if you give them an incentive to do poorly, and the incentive being more money, mm -hmm. you do them, you give them an incentive to do poorly so they'll get more money, I think what you're going to get is schools doing worse yeah, that's so good. that they can have more money. So yeah. it makes sense um, from a free market perspective to you do the metric the opposite way that the school people the school bureau bureaucracy would have you do. Yeah. And probably our last topic today yeah. is, you know, I think this legislative session, we can't uh, escape it without talking about school finance. As we know, the Kansas Supreme Court has said you must spend more, don't know how much more. But April 30th is the deadline for a new Kansas school finance formula or something to happen. That seems like a long ways away, but the legislature, legislature takes two or three weeks off in April, so it's not all that far away on the legislative calendar. What's been going on this year so far with school finance? Nothing. No, nothing. nothing. Well, they, they they've uh, been there <laughs> for like six weeks, right? And not, right. Yeah. Um, they have hired a, um, a researcher to, to to produce research. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's a, a person from A and M who's going to come in and survey what they've done and give Is them some recommendations. Is that Augenblick and Myers? No, no, it's a it's a. I wish I could think of her name. It's oh. a specific researcher, um, it's it, a person with a name. Is that the firm that did the efficiency study a couple of years ago? Um, well, we'll, maybe. we'll look it up, but yeah. Anyway. Maybe. So they've got someone working on. And that I believe is due March 15th. So I don't think you're gonna see any movement at all until they have this study. And I don't think they're calling it an efficiency study, but they're, they've got a study. Some sort of analysis. Now, yes. was that person, is that person, Appointed by Republicans or Democrats? Um, or it was the the what is the name of that committee? The Legislative Coordinating, Coordinating Council hired this person to, to, to so so kind of both. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know okay. what the vote was on that, but because you know there's so much you know of the, oh this came from the Kansas Policy Institute, so we're not going to believe anything they say. And I tend to look at stuff produced by some of the spending outfits with that same jaundiced eye and. That doesn't do anybody any good. We need to have at least a common base of figures, and that's hard because you know you still get um, people coming out and saying S Kansas only spends four thousand dollars per right. student on schools, when that's just the starting point of a formula right. that goes upwards that's the a great deal. Bare from minimum, there. and no student is only worth four thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But yet, that's what they tell us with a straight face, and 
Why, why do people believe it, Bob, <laughs> if you figure that <laughs> out? I they have a motivation f to make people think that that's all we spend because, you know, then then the pitch for more spending becomes easier. But when you tell them, no, it's really much more, it's a little bit different. But anyway, uh, Janine V. Herbert of the uh, Sentinel, uh, we are out of time today. So thanks very much for stopping by. Thank you for And having uh, me. we'll see you again before too terribly long. Thank you. And that's all for Wichita Liberty TV this week. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week.